So my daughter is three, and she falls down and gets owies. She doesn't like them, but I explain to her that that's sort of the point. She gets that now. She says, we like owies because they mean no more owies. Our bodies hurt us as a deterrent to doing dumb and self-destructive things. Owies are very, very important. Outside of anesthetics, anything that deadens pain is extremely dangerous. You don't feel a burst appendix, you die. You don't feel a toothache, you swallow poison and die. Pain is our way of changing course, of saving ourselves from self-destruction. Getting rid of pain can seem like a good idea, but it's really, really not. The Federal Reserve, the Ponzi scheme counterfeiting of money to enrich the politically connected at the expense of the poor, the weak, the old, and the sick. The Federal Reserve is a civilization threatening drug. Evil is costly. The initiation of force is expensive and risky. Violence makes enemies, starts turf wars, sickens the soul, kills love, ends lives. What stops the growth of evil? The same thing that stops the growth of any sickness. Pain, treatment, and cure. Evil is very, very costly. War, the greatest evil, is staggeringly expensive. The Pentagon loses literally billions of dollars under its couches every single year. It uses a million bullets to put just one bullet into another human being. War shreds economies, minds, hearts, relationships, health, wealth, freedom. War destroys civilizations. What stops war? The same thing that stops any gambling addict. Running out of money. War is stopped only by poverty. When you cannot pay the soldiers, well, blessed become the peacemakers. War is limited by economics, by costs, by the hard wall of hard currency. Unless... Unless war is not free, but profitable. This is where the Federal Reserve comes in. Who pays for war? A defensive war, unprovoked and unavoidable, sure, we would all chip in for that. But a lying, swaggering, endless missile-hurling overseas mass murder? Hmm... To cover current government spending, taxes would have to be raised almost 60%. We have wars and bailouts and untold bribery and tax cuts. Paid for by what? Who keeps lending to a country hell-bent on empire? No one, because war and empire drain the treasury. Look at England after the Second World War. Ran out of money and close down the empire. Lend to warmongers, and what will they pay you back with? Broken pottery? Blood-stained bodies? Bones? Dust? Lamentations? War is not profitable. It is not a growth industry. It grows like a tumor grows, at the expense of life. How, then, is it fed? It is fed by the Fed. China has lent the U.S. a little over a trillion dollars. The Federal Reserve has lent and created almost seven trillion dollars. Seven trillion dollars! That's eight times the spending on the Iraq War 
12 times the spending in Afghanistan. Over the last six years, there have been very few new taxes, even though total fiscal spending has risen nearly a trillion dollars a year. How is this possible? It's possible. It's happening. Because the Federal Reserve creates the free money that makes evil profitable. Seven trillion dollars covers the bills for a whole lot of evil. If there was truth in advertising, the Federal Reserve would have this slogan, Free Evil! Or, The Federal Reserve, turning evil into profits since 1913. And it's not just the overseas wars. How long would the trillion dollar war on drugs last if everyone got a bill for enforcing it? How long would 700 plus military bases last if everyone got a bill for them? So, what is the Fed relying on? How can letting the ultra-powerful type whatever they want into their own bank accounts possibly last? The short answer is, it can't. History is littered with the dry bones of hundreds of paper currencies, not backed by gold or commodities or anything more real than the vampiric promises of politicians. But how is it lasting? Well, it lasts because we do not love our children enough. To avoid change, to avoid conflict, to avoid the peaceful revolution of real money, we are sacrificing our children. The children in pigtails, the children in the crib, the children in the womb, even the children who are as yet just a gleam in their daddy's eyes. We are Aztecs. Our children's futures are being sold on the auction block to the highest bidder to avoid conflict and virtue in the here and now. Their futures have become futures. They will be taxed at 60, 70, 80 percent or more to pay for this grand canyon of debt. And it will not be enough, it will never be enough, for the lords of the new serfs are insatiable, my friends. Zombies get their fill and wander off. There is no logical end to the escalation of subsidized human greed, save gulags, leg irons, and mushroom clouds. If a corporation were diluting baby food to the point where babies were starving to death, would we not act? If there was poison in the water that wrecked their livers and brains, would we not act? Our children's futures are being eviscerated, but we do not act. Thomas Paine once wrote, If there must be trouble, let it be in my day, that my child may have peace. We avoid trouble by auctioning off our offspring. Paper money dilutes our responses, dulls our outrage, stokes our resentment against those who cry out for action, for exposure, for truth. Gold bugs, we call them. Conspiracy theorists. Paul Tards. <sighs> you can always tell the pioneers, not by the wind on their faces, but by the arrows in their backs. Half the world is producing, and half the world is stealing. Stealing through inflation, through debt, through public sector pensions and free health care and military industrial contracts and bailouts and government bonds. But they are not really stealing from us. That is the greatest horror. They slither like ghosts into the crib and chain up the children, stamp and own them, sell their futures, their lives, all the productive joys of their future selves. A thirty-year bond 
is a 30-year sentence. And still, we doze on and do not act because the pain of this horror is kept from us. We are drugged by easy money and soft living, by state power that only seems benevolent because the bill is still in the mail, by propaganda and distractions and the easy self-deceptions of the guilty. I do not call for a revolution, since that relies on new values. I ask only for integrity, for consistency with the lessons of our youth. Do not force others to suffer for your mistakes, for your greed. Do not spend what you do not have. Don't take other people's money. Do not sell children. Let's get back to the days before money grew on trees or magically sprouted from keyboards, but had to be earned. Money must be limited, for unlimited money is unlimited evil. Let the price of injustice accrue to those committing it. End war. End serfdom. End child slavery. End the Fed. <laughs>